All right guys, this is the Sony HTS40R. It's a home theater system. I managed to grab a deal on Amazon Prime Day. This initially was 350 pounds. I got it for 280 pounds. So I saved 70 pounds and I'm going to set it up with my TV here behind me. Just a side disclaimer, this doesn't necessarily have to be set with just Sony TVs. You can set it with pretty much any other TV like my Samsung AU8000 that I have right behind me. This is a 5.1 channel speaker, so it has three channels on the soundbar itself. And then it also has two channels for some rear speakers that I'm going to set up behind the sofa opposite my TV at the other end of this living room. I'm pretty excited to try this out and give you guys a showcase of how it sounds. And I will give you a comparison between the audio coming directly from the TV and then the audio directly coming from this home theater system. Just remember how you guys will hear it. It will be slightly different to how I hear it in person. So make sure if you are watching this video to try and listen to it with some headphones to get the most ideal realistic view of how this actually performs. So let's go ahead and unbox this and see how it works. Okay, so this is everything in the box. Let me just quickly show you what comes with it. This is a 600 watt speaker system and it comes with this very large subwoofer and I'm gonna be testing how the bass sounds on this. I'll run through some of the specs of the subwoofer in a second. Then you have the rear two speakers. This is the left and the right. These connect to the preamp and the amplifier is what connects to the soundbar and subwoofer. And this is what allows it to do it wirelessly. It also comes with a remote control. You can see pretty much the standard buttons as you would expect for a soundbar remote. It's got some options there to change some of the modes, the volume, and all of the other bits that you expect to control with the audio. Also has a startup user manual. Then it comes with the optical cable. It doesn't have any HDMI cable in the box, so you'll have to supply your own high quality cable, which I'm going to do. I always prefer using HDMI going into the eARC HDMI port on my TV just so that I can use that to control the audio from the TV and the soundbar at the exact same time. This is the soundbar itself. You can see it's split into these three different mesh sections, each for the left, center, and right speakers. One thing that differentiates this soundbar to traditional soundbars is it doesn't have the digital display right there in the center of the soundbar. This actually happens on the subwoofer itself, so the soundbar is completely minimal. Now you'll notice here at the back of the soundbar, there isn't any ports. There's some holes here if you wanted to fix this to a wall. So you have the wall mounting screw holes there on the left and the right of the soundbar. And then the only thing you have are these cables to connect to the subwoofer. So you've got color coded here. Let's move to the back of the subwoofer. So just at the top, you have your analog input, the HDMI out for the TV arc, which I'm going to be using. And then you have the optical port there as well. These are the ports for the soundbar to connect to, like I showed you the color coding ones front, center, and left. Then you have your power port there at the bottom. And then on the top of the subwoofer, you actually have touch controls. You have the power button there. You have the menu button to change the modes, the Bluetooth button. Then you have the plus and minus buttons to change the volume. This is great because you can control everything even if you do lose the remote control directly from the subwoofer itself. You also have a USB port just at the front of the subwoofer here. This is if you wanted to play music directly from a USB drive, but personally for me, I don't think anyone is doing that nowadays and I don't see the point of that anymore. So apart from that, I don't think you can use this for anything else. So for me personally, the USB port is pretty pointless. Okay, everything is now connected. I've got the subwoofer just there next to my TV stand. There's the soundbar. It sits flush right in the middle of the TV. You just see there. Looks perfect, very clean and very minimal design. Now let's go ahead and turn on the subwoofer and show you where the digital display is because right now you won't be able to see it, it's actually hidden. Okay, let's go ahead and turn this on. You get the blue LED indicator and there is the digital display. It hides behind an invisible screen. So once it turns on, you'll see TV. That is the input that's connected. If you did want to change the input, you can press the input button just there at the top. But essentially this is where you'll be able to see all of the controls. So if I change the volume, it goes up pretty high as well. And it does sound pretty great. So this is where everything is displayed. Now let's take a look at the rear speakers. So this is the sofa at the back of my living room. 
and you'll see I've wall mounted the rear left and right speakers. So let's go and take a closer look. And the great thing about these is they paired out of the box. I've got the preamp here next to the left hand speaker and I didn't need to do any connections. I didn't need to press any of the pairing buttons or anything like that. The green light indicator showcases that it has connected directly to the subwoofer and soundbar. And pretty much I was instantly hearing audio coming directly from this. So it's very easy to warm out and it sounds absolutely great. And I've got the right one just over here as well. Just a side disclaimer, the rear speakers do not provide continuous sound if that's something that you were expecting. The rear channels are only used for background audio that comes from that direction specifically. So vocals and music, they come from the soundbar, the bass comes from the subwoofer, and things like a car passing by or some background chatter from you know people in a restaurant or something, that will come from the rear speakers only. And that's what actually will give you the most immersive cinematic audio experience because it feels like you're in the middle of the action. Okay, let's do an audio test. Currently, the subwoofer and the soundbar, they are completely off. So the sound you're going to be hearing is coming directly from the TV and the volume will be set to 20. This is the average volume that I have when I watch anything and I wanna give you guys a side-by-side -side comparison on how big of a difference the audio makes when I switch on the Sony S40R. Make sure to have your headphones in because it will be quite hard to distinguish just from hearing it from a YouTube video, but this will give you an idea of the clarity of audio when you do have a speaker system like this, even though you may not hear the surround sound speakers from the rear speakers behind the camera. Okay, you guys can pretty much hear that it's not great and the speakers on the TV itself are not that great. What I'm going to do is play this back from the start and turn on the soundbar and showcase to you guys the difference it makes. So let's take a look. And finally, I am standing in the middle of the room, so I'm trying to give you as much clarity on the surround sound as much as I can. This is one final video that I wanted to showcase to you that does perform the surround sound very well. And hopefully you guys can hear the clarity in this demo. This is Dolby Cinema. It's where the most advanced cinematic technology you've ever experienced begins. This is Dolby Atmos. The number of speakers around you no longer matters because this is the world's first object-based cinematic audio. With powerful moving audio that transcends from channels to moving around you with pinpoint accuracy. Soundscape system, move the scene. Come on, guys, let's go. Or 
captures the full extent of nature's fury. And remember this? Okay, so hopefully you found that audio demo really useful and it gave you clarity on how great this sounds. Probably for me, it's one of the best soundbars I've ever had. And one thing to note as well is that if you really wanted to utilize the rear speakers, you first have to make sure that the content you're watching supports 5.1 audio. Here's an example on Netflix. You know, for example, if you're browsing all of your on-demand apps, you should see the 5.1 logo here and that should give you indication that whatever movie or TV show you're going to watch supports speaker setups that have five channels like this one does. So nowadays, I think most of the things that you are watching do support 5.1. Personally, I think the room filling sound with this home speaker system is great and it does a much better job than some of the cheaper soundbar subwoofer sets that cost less than 100 pounds. And there's plenty of them on Amazon if you do take a look. So is this worth the price? For me personally, I would say yes, absolutely. Now, I also wanted to talk a little bit about the downsides of this home theater system. One of the things I've noticed with the subwoofer itself, with the touch capacitive buttons on the top, they were quite fiddly. And if I wanted to change the volumes, for example, it took a few taps to actually register and use that to control the volume. If you hold it down, the volume does go up and down, you know, very fast consecutively but it wasn't something smooth and I didn't really enjoy it. I would have preferred maybe having physical buttons. I had to, you know, tap a few times to also turn it off, which wasn't great, but I'm probably never going to use that and I'm just gonna stick to the remote control. And the second downside that I would say is that this soundbar speaker system doesn't have any Dolby Atmos support. Don't be fooled by the logos saying Dolby Audio because that is slightly different thing. Dolby Atmos, works on a 3D spectrum, whereas Dolby Audio works on a 2D spectrum. So if you did have Dolby Atmos, for example, what that would do is give you a immersive audio experience by sending the 3D sound virtually with the side and height channels. So it makes you really feel like you're getting sound from pretty much all over the room rather than from the front and the back. Whereas Dolby Audio, on the other hand, is 2D audio, which comes from the three channels on the front and two channels on the back. But let's say, for example, what that is very good for is balancing the audio so that when you have very quick cuts between scenes in your movies, then it doesn't go from extreme lows to extreme highs. It gives you a very good balanced audio. So you feel like you're just listening to one entire movie at pretty much the same level. And what that does, it essentially gives you much clearer dialogue as well. So have you ever had the scenario where you're watching a scene, but you can't hear the person because there's a lot of background music coming from that scene? This one doesn't do that with 2D audio and Dolby audio. It will make it clearer as well. And if you wanted to enhance the clarity on dialogue, then you actually have the option on the remote control as well to make it go into dialogue mode. So you hear the audio and vocals of someone speaking a lot clearer than more of the bass and the punchiness of your movies. And you know, when I'm searching for soundbars, there's not a lot on the market that do have rear speakers that work as good as these. If you look on the Sony website, I think you know these are the last set of home theater systems they do that have rear speakers. Everything that's more higher priced than this are just the soundbars and subwoofers themselves. However, if you are looking to get a soundbar by Sony that has Dolby Atmos support, so more enhanced clarity 3D immersive audio, then there is a couple of options on this site which I can probably recommend. For example, the Sony ZF9, that comes in around £599 and that will be my recommendation. 
But if you really wanted to get the best out of all of them and budget was not an issue with you, then I would suggest you go for the Spatial Audio S-Force Pro, which is the A7000 model, but it's a whopping 1,300 pounds. And that costs more than a lot of TVs themselves nowadays. But that's a topic for another day. Hopefully you found the review of the S40R and it gave you guys a good indication if it is actually worth buying for the price. 100% yes, I think it's definitely a great system. It enhances so much better the audio coming from my Samsung TV. If you guys have any other questions about this soundbar, drop a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if you did like this video, make sure to give it a like. New videos out with really cool tech gadgets like this every week and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of those ones. And I will catch you guys at the next one. Take care.